Hello, hello. Give me a second if I can figure things out. Hold on, I'm scrambling here, everybody. Hold on to your hats. Gosh, let's see. All right, I'm seeing a couple of familiar faces, which is wonderful. Welcome, welcome back. Um, there's, a, <laughs> there's a lot of finagling behind the scenes here, so you're just going to have to give me time to set this up. Uh, let's see. You guys read the title. You know what we're doing today. Okay, we'll get started in a minute or two, uh, but let's say hi to chat. Hello, welcome back, Archmagister. Uh, I wonder what your shift is as an Archmagister, if you can always make these streams, but welcome, welcome. Uh, Taryn, welcome back. Akila, Nivnov, Sibylin, Squid. I haven't, have I seen Snivnov here before? I feel like you're a newer name, at least to me. I don't think I've caught you before. Sibylin, Squid, welcome. Neutromancer, welcome back. Rowan, hello. Nududu299, I saw your comment earlier. Uh, let's see... Uh, let's see, will I kill this? Um, bananudos con Nutella? <laughs> Is that bananas with Nutella? Wow, I'm, I'm super American. <laughs> okay, maybe not. <laughs> Hold on. Um, awesome, awesome. Hell Penguin, so this one's going to be a five-parter, right? <laughs> this might be. Um, of all the things that I have, um, that have been recommended to me, Pathfinder's up there. Uh, and I'll get, I'll get into it as we... Uh, get into as we open up the book, I'll get into the, the nitty gritty of this. Uh, hello, Rosso, nice to see you here. Let me see, but definitely more than one. This will not be the only Pathfinder stream in the near future. Yes, I did catch that. Path Packed World, Sue, is that a different game? Is Packed Worlds different? Prompt I have played 1e, haven't got a chance to play 2e yet. Interesting, cool. I'm hearing good things about 2e in general, so. Oh, let me see. I can turn up myself. Give me a second. Check one. Check. Check, check. How's this? Is this any better? How about now? <laughs> can you hear me now? I don't want to talk too much about about my experience with Pathfinder until we're really into it. This little this little segment right here, this is for you guys in chat. This is not <laughs> this is not for the major audience. This is me just catching up with the people I haven't seen in a couple days. Um if not my dim is switching over to 2E and I'm actually excited. That is exciting. That is exciting. Uh don't let anyone tell you otherwise. Big bad, much better. Thank you. Noodle overload much better. Cool, 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 cool. Packed Worlds is part of Starfinder setting, just Pathfinder in space. Can you clarify? Because I, I did mean to ask, is Starfinder a different set of rules than Pathfinder? Or is it like 99% the same plus outer space rules? I think that's what I need clarifying on. Because I don't know if it's like an entirely different learning set. Or if I can learn Pathfinder and implicitly understand Pathfinder be uh, Starfinder because of it. Uh, William, William Belly, hoping you'll like it. It's different from PF1, but there's fun things they changed. Also, Humble Bundle has a great cheap bundle for those interested. That's exactly the bundle I got. I just picked up the $5 bundle. Um, my friend got the $25 bundle and I chipped in for that. So we do have all of those books that are in there. I don't know how many books are out there. I just assume that's a good chunk of it and it's all we'll need for a good long while. So. Starfinder is a bit of in-between rules for 1E and 2E. Starfinder, I think, isn't 2E. Oh, interesting. So Starfinder came out before 2E, so it isn't quite the same rule set. Interesting. So it's like somewhere in the middle. It's like a 1.5-ish sort of thing, plus space. Okay. I'm glad there's a lot of people in chat who understand Pathfinder. I'm going to need your help as we're getting into this. Um, cool. We just crossed the five-minute mark. So let's start. <laughs> so let's start talking about what we're doing today. Um, in the series of 99 more, 
Let me try that again. In the series of 99 more, I'm attempting to learn 99 other tabletop RPGs. And of course, eventually on this list, I have to run into Pathfinder. Now, this is kind of um, expedited on the onus of the Humble Bundle coming out just recently. It just dropped and it released like, there were like 20 something books you could grab for Pathfinder for like $25. And it was a wonderful deal. And I figured, hey, why not jump in now? A whole lot of other content creators from D&D are taking this opportunity to learn about Pathfinder 2E, and I kind of want to be there too. Now, I purposefully, very, very explicitly did not touch a single book of Pathfinder 2E, never went to the archives of Nethys, never went to Path Builder, I think, and never watched any streams or anything like that of Pathfinder because I wanted this stream right here to be a completely blind experience. I don't know about any of the rules. I don't know anything that's changed. I listened to like a little bit of a podcast on NADPOD to learn a little bit of it, but otherwise I'm completely in the dark of what makes Pathfinder 2E different from any other D&D game. And I understand there's a lot of similarities, but the differences is what I'm going to be focusing on here. So because of that, I know there's a whole lot of resources recommended to me. There's a whole lot of websites that people sent me. There's a whole lot of different archives and a whole lot of different databases that can help me learn this process. But for this stream, because this is the first stream of what will probably be a few others of me learning Pathfinder, I want to start with the book, page one, cover page forward. And then we're going to see how far we get there. And then probably towards the end of the stream, we're going to be probably towards the end of the stream where I'm going to just going to go to chat and you guys are going to recommend things for me to learn. So, so that, that you think I might find interesting. The goal of this and the stream that we're going to have next week of Pathfinder. Oh, dang. Do I have three streams next week? I might. Yes, 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 I do. The Friday stream next week will also be Pathfinder because, and this is why this whole thing is expedited and I didn't say, and I didn't save Pathfinder for later is because I have a game my friend is running of Pathfinder on the 19th, February 19th. So that's two weeks from now. So I have two weeks to learn how to play Pathfinder and how to play a human fighter, which I believe is one of the starter iconic characters, I think it's called. I'm just going to take that sheet, whatever it is, and I'm going to learn it. And I need to know how to play that in two weeks. So I'm counting on you guys to help me through this because <laughs> this I'm going in blind. And if I'm not mistaken, the the PDF for Pathfinder, I'm going to bounce over now. This PDF, I'm not even on the first page. I'm sorry. I'm so sorry. This PDF is 642 pages. <laughs> You're telling me that the Pathfinder core rule book is 600 plus pages. That's ridiculous. That's wild. <laughs> There's no way that the, first, the core rule book is 600 pages. Why is it 600 pages? Chat, please enlighten me. Why in the world this book needs to be 600 pages? And please tell me that not all of it is mandatory to read. Because I know the D&D 5e book, well, there's a lot of pages there, and a lot of it is just... A lot of it is just um, spells, right? <laughs> It's just spells and monsters. So. Okay, I'm, I'm just going to I'm just going to trust you guys. Whoever's in chat, uh, you guys are my coaches through this. If you have any friends that know Pathfinder, um, invite them to the chat. I'm going to be here for at least an hour and a half just learning as much as I can and just reading the first few chapters probably until like the ancestries someone was telling me to start at chapter nine which makes no sense to me why would you ever need to start at chapter nine of a book that's <laughs> that makes no sense <laughs> and it should not make sense but uh, i'll get to that when i get to that um feet most of it is feats for so nivnov says most of it is spells uh Ralanir, Ral, Ralanir seven says feats for classes the last chunk of the crb CRB means core rulebook. Oh, CRB means core rulebook. It's specifically GMG stuff too. Game Master Guide? I don't know the acronyms, guys. I don't know the acronyms. You guys are using acronyms. I don't know what that means. 
doesn't chapter nine have all the things compiled? I don't know. I don't know. Uh, <laughs> so this is all a blur to me, but I'm glad you guys are here um, to, to watch me do it. So we are 10 minutes in. Without further ado, let's start reading Pathfinder 2nd Edition for the first time. Okay. Wonderful starting page. <laughs> There's a classic red dragon, as I'm assuming, and I'm going to take guesses here. This is a rogue over here. Can you guys see my cursor? Maybe. There's the rogue. There's the dwarf fighter, maybe. And this is the cleric. Is there still a rogue fighter cleric in this game? I don't know. I don't know for sure. Um, cool, cool, cool. Let's start with the table of contents. Lots of names here. Okay, chapter one, which we're going to do is the introduction, basic rules. Then we're going to do ancestries and backgrounds. We'll read through that a little bit. There's six races here. Am I assuming that these are the base six races of the game? Why is my highlighter gray? Um, are these the base six races? Are the only six races in this book? And then pick a background. Okay, so I know <laughs> I did. So we don't say races, right? We say ancestries. Ancestries here backgrounds i know what backgrounds are details on languages these are classes so they're still called classes we have fighters clerics wizards alchemists Ooh, base class alchemist that's pretty neat or just a few of the 12 character classes interesting so i know the D D 12 character classes and maybe let me just premise because i know some people are new here and don't know that my channel has been dedicated to D D for the past um two years i have played nothing but D and D fifth edition for uh, I've played nothing but D and D fifth edition for the last five years, which means I've DM'd over five hundred games in the last half decade. I've played in close to a thousand between all the campaigns that I'm part of and West March games that I jump in on. Uh, I've played well over a thousand games of D and D from both sides of the screen. Um, I know a lot of things mechanically about D&D, &D, uh, more than most people should. So I'm going to be looking at everything in this book from the perspective of somebody who truly only knows 5th edition and has only now, within the last two or three months, been researching other games. So I'm going to be using a lot of D&D &D 5e terminology because that's all I know. <laughs> that's all I know. So bear with me. Bear with me. Dwarf is a ranger? You guys are telling me dwarf is a... Wait, hold up. What? You're, you're telling me that you know you guys know for absolutely certain that this boy right here, that this guy right here is a ranger? No shot. What tells you that it's a ranger? How do you guys know it's not a fighter? Is this like a character that you guys already know of? Does he appear later in the book? Does he make a cameo? <laughs> no shot. You guys know that it's definitely a ranger. Okay, listen, I'll trust you. I'll trust you. Uh, let's see. 10 minutes for the cover page, great pace. Hey, 10 minutes for the prologue and greeting, you guys. Not 10 minutes for the cover page. Come on. No, I don't see any metal armor. Oh, is that the giveaway? So how is he not a druid? Because of the weapons? So no metal armor plus weapons equals ranger. There are always iconics for each class. I'm guessing the iconics are the characters that you guys know. The dwarf is the iconic. The dwarf is the iconic for the ranger. So he's kind of the face. I know like the default art for D&D &D characters and I, I can recognize them if they appeared in other media. So I'm guessing you guys just know that the dwarf is associated with the ranger. Awesome. Cool. We're going to see the dwarf later in the book. Thank you. That's exactly what I needed to know. Harsk is a name. Harsk, Harsk, the dwarf ranger. You guys know his name. That's wonderful. I don't know the names of anybody in the decor, in the player's handbook of D&D. &D. Um, I'm so glad he has a name. Okay, we gotta keep going. We gotta keep. What is? We're, like, what? What? What they said in chat. We're we're 14 minutes in. We gotta we gotta move. Um, let's see. We got the table of contents, classes, skills. What are skills? Oh, pff, like skills. <laughs> skills in D and D. That's actually not different. Okay, cool, cool, cool. Um, feats. I know what feats are. I hear there's a lot of them. Um, I like they're bountiful. Um, I was introduced to like a geometry feat or, or a math feat recently on by um, by Dice Queen D on, on the previous stream, um, which was wild. And I'm guessing that's not in 2E, but I know what equipment is. I know what spells are. I think I'm good to go. Uh, let's keep going. This is cool art. 
Oh, are these, what are they, why are these numbered? Oh, are these like credits at the end of the book? That's awesome. If they credit all the artists, because this is really cool art. I dig that. Age of Lost Omens. Okay, this is actually what I'm interested in. But this, <laughs> wait, I just saw this. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Chapter eight is 400 pages in. Oh my gosh, wait, wait, we got to go back. Where did all the pages go? Where did all the, oh, okay, here it is. <laughs> I was going to say, when did we get to page 400? Page 66 is class. There's 60 pages before I get to classes. And then 170 pages of classes for 12 character classes? You're telling me 12 character classes span 170 pages? Oh my gosh, I'm not ready for this. Feats are surprisingly short. You guys told me there'd be 20, like thousands of feats. But there's only like 16 pages of it. And then spells, 296. To force you. Okay, so there's like a hundred plus pages of spells. Spells is a big one here. Or maybe they just have a lot of text. Okay, okay. And then finally, <laughs> 442 pages in, it's time to play the game. Got it. Cool. Good to know. Good to know. Game mastering. They have a whole game master section, which is wonderful. Um, I guess I never made the connection, but Age of Lost Omens is like the era, right? The present era, so to speak. And I'm guessing there's other ages that aren't the Lost Omens or something. <laughs> there was the 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 age of uh, currently in possession omens, previously before Lost, you know. Uh, and hopefully after this is the age of found omens, you know, <laughs> things like that. Um, okay, cool, cool, cool. Game mastering, crafting, and treasure conditions, appendix, character sheet, glossary, and index. These are all words I know. These are all good words. Good words. Good words. This art is sick. This is like a. Taking a guess here, Paladin Iconic, Monk Iconic, and you look like a wizard. I, but you guys are all dressed in the same color, so I don't know if you guys are Iconics or just like the same team. And these are cool looking kobolds. I actually like, look at these faces. They're adorable. They're like shark heads. They're not like snouted. That's cute. Okay, good to know. Oh, what is, hmm, that's cool. Big old bug, more kobolds. Lots of art. I'm digging the lots of art. Wait, I haven't taken a chance to look at um, the chat in a bit. Oh, people recognize sacred geometry. Wonderful. Yeah, that's exactly the one that I learned about. Okay, cool, cool, cool. Okay, I'm glad that everybody in chat is very knowledgeable. Thank you for all of this. Uh <laughs> Well, finally, we're going to get into this. Um, this is an opening dialogue. For the sake of time, we're not going to get into this. Let's be honest, medieval, fa medieval fantasy is the same in 90% of places. I'm recognizing Saren Ray here. Saren Ray is um, something that showed up in Critical Role because that campaign started off in Pathfinder. And then Saren Ray became Everlight in the Tal'Dorei canon. And that's the D&D crossover. <laughs> Um, cool, cool, cool. Okay, intro. Pathfinder is a fantasy tabletop role-playing game RPG where you and your friends gather to tell a tale of brave heroes and cunning villains in a world filled with terrifying monsters and amazing treasures. More importantly, Pathfinder is a game where your character's choices determine how the story unfolds. I'm going to be honest with you. I'm actually really interested in the lore of this place because I, I'm going to be, <laughs> let's be frank, right? There are mechanical differences between Pathfinder and and D and D, but we're st it's still very much the same genre and very much the same Venn diagram cut, so to speak, that they both exist in. So the lore of the world is actually where the divergence would take place, where there's actually different things. But anyway. Ancient empires, city states, tombs, dungeons, monster layers, Pathfinder. What is a role playing game? We know this. We know all of this. They call it the Game Master, not the Dungeon Master. Good to know. Cool. Flow of the game. Takes place in sessions. We know that. Single session is called One Shot. We know that. Lumbering Frost Giants. We know those. And the players is everyone except the GM. Cool. These are all words we know. I'm very happy to say that we know these words. Dice. All the same dice? Yes. Yes. Okay, all the same terminology here. Let's keep going. 
you know, the game master. I'm waiting. To, I'm looking for something that's different from what I already know. So game master is good. Adventure. Bestiary. We know this. Maps and minis. We know this. Accessories. We know this. Honestly, a lot so far. So far, so good. Give me some tools of play. Character sheet. Dice. Basics of play. PCs, NPCs, level, experience points. Experience point leveling still exists. Okay. Levels are... Def so leveling is a thing. The 20th level, still the same. So far, so good. In addition to level, characters are defined by ability scores. Still the same. We're still good. Guys, we're hanging in there. Strength, dexterity, con, whiz, intelligence, charisma. Hmm. Okay, so those six are all the same. Uh, ability scores for Ordinary Folk range as low as 3 and as high as 18. With 10 representing average human capabilities, high-level characters can have ability scores that range much higher than 18. Okay, so it can go higher than 18. I was going to say, is that the limit? An ability score changes your success. Chance of success. The adjustment is called an ability modifier. We know this. The first choice... Oh, this is actually... Okay, so credit to the Paizo team... Um, this is really clever. The ABCs, A being ancestry, B equals background, C equals class. I think that's adorable. That's really cool. Just that how that lines up. So ancestry is the um, analog to race and heritage. Background is, I'm guessing, probably an expanded system from what D&D 5e has, which is very limited. And class defines most of their abilities. Great. And then feats, I understand in D&D 5e, feats are optional here. I'm assuming they're very crucial, right, <laughs> to just leveling in general. I mean, I mean, I've heard so much about feats, and I'm very curious what that means. Um, and of course, skills I'm well aware of. Okay, cool. Uh, creating a narrative... All words we know. Adventure and campaign. All words we know. Okay, we're good. We made it past this page with only one thing different so far. Ancestries. Ancestries replacing races and feats being not optional. I don't believe... You can correct me if I'm wrong, but I think in this game, there's no such thing as optional feats. It's basically everyone has feats. Okay, playing the game. Exploration, encounters, downtime. Oh, interesting. So they kind of treat it as three different modes. Exploring, encountering, and downtime when they're not doing any of it. That's interesting. I've never really seen that terminology used. As in, like, traveling, dealing with problems, and then not dealing with problems. as three different instances. DCs still exist. Cool. Critical success, critical failure. Yes, yes, yes. These are words that I know. Yeah, these are all these are all good so far. My, my knowledge is carrying over. Proficiency, more words that we know. Oh, interesting. This is new. Proficiency is a simple way of assessing your character's general skill of general level of training and aptitude for a given task. It can be broken into five different ranks: untrained, trained, expert, master, and legendary. Each rank grants a specific different each rank granted a different proficiency bonus. If you're untrained at a statistic, your proficiency bonus is zero. I get this. That's clear. You must solely rely you must rely solely on the raw potential of your ability modifi modifier. If you have a proficiency rank for a statistic is trained, expert, master, and legendary, your bonus equals your character's level. What? Plus another number based on rank. What wait, that gets really high. Doesn't it? So like a legendary, a level 20 fighter with level 20 fighter with legendary, let's just make up a skill athletics would be, and, and assuming, I don't know how ability modifiers work, assuming a plus five strength, if that's a thing. So it would be the roll plus your strength plus 20 plus eight is that real is that a thing 
Okay, look back at criticals. It works a bit differently. Okay, okay, okay. I need to go back to criticals. Okay, okay. Let me let me jump back because I missed that. Critical, critical, critical. Thank you guys. I need I need to be coached. Oh my gosh, where is it? Did it say? Did they mention criticals yet? They haven't talked. Oh, here. No? No. Oh, here. Okay, okay, okay. Oh, this is all different. Oh my gosh, this is all different. Okay. <laughs> Okay, time to learn about critical successes and critical failures. Uh, if the result of the check is equal to or greater than the DC, the check is successful. I know this. I know this. If it is less, the check is a failure. I know this as well. Beating this DC by 10 or more is referred to as a critical success. Which usually grants an especially positive outcome. Similarly, failing a check by 10 or more is a critical failure. And it's called a fumble. This often results in negative. You can also score a critical success on a 20. Likewise, rolling a 1 is a critical failure. And if the not all checks have a special effect on a critical success or critical failure, and such results should be treated just like an ordinary success or failure instead. Wow. Okay. So, so there's four different results here. There's success, critical success, failure, and critical failure. And critical success is a, tw is a nat 20 or plus 10 on the DC and failure is minus 10 on the DC or a nat 1. Then that's not always the case. You know, sometimes that won't apply, which is why these numbers can get so high. So you're telling me that there could be a possibility of like a plus, of like a DC 40, and that's like a realistic goal because you can have a nat 20 plus a level, character level 20, plus 8 from your legendary proficiency, plus your proficiency? No, 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 no. Plus whatever stat you're using. So like a DC 40 is not an unrealistic thing. Whereas in D&D, 40 is kind of the cap-ish <laughs> of, of truly impossible feats. Yes, yeah. Ignore the Chimera example, it's bad. Good to know. Cool. <laughs> okay. Okay, I'm learning, I'm learning, I'm learning. Yeah, these I, you, you, everyone's telling me these numbers get very high very quickly. Cool. Okay, I mean, that's cool. That means more crits. More crits is always more fun. Unless someone will tell me otherwise. Okay, so a net 20 is not always a crit. It can just be a normal success if a 20 normally would have failed. Oh. Huh. Okay, okay. Oh, okay, okay. Okay, I'm learning from chat. Cool, cool, cool. Uh, also in Pathfinder, no matter how high your AC is, you're going to get hit. So armor is for keeping you from getting critted on. I, I, that doesn't make sense to me yet. <laughs> that that sentence doesn't make sense to me yet. Um, but let's keep going. Um, so that's cool. Now I've learned about critical successes, critical failures, a plus and minus 10 thresholds. I've learned about different levels of proficiency. Trained, untrained, expert, master, and legendary. 2468, which is basically like... It's it's a more nuanced version of of proficient versus expertise. Um, and you can add your character's level to the roll, which is significant. That's a big number. Okay. Exploration seemingly seems straightforward. Encounters. While exploration is handled in freeform manner... Players roll initiative. I know this word. It's still the same thing. The encounter occurs over a number of rounds. Each round is equal to six seconds of time. Yep, that checks out. During a round, each participant takes your turn. Okay, so here's the famous line. When it's your turn to act, you can use up to three actions. This, this is not explained to me yet. You can use up to three actions. Most simple things, such as drawing a weapon, using moving a short distance, opening a door, swinging a sword. Use a single action to perform. Oh, Huh. Okay, so in D&D &D terms, drawing a weapon is an object interaction. It's an object interaction. Moving a short distance is a dash or just movement. So I'm guessing you can't move at all without using an action. Opening a door, object interaction, swing a sword is an attack of an attack action. So all of these are just actions now. So 
So draw weapon, close distance, swing sword is three actions. Okay. Okay, unless chat tells me otherwise. Okay, that makes sense. Wait, let me pop out chat so I can read you guys. That's good to know. So three actions. So there's no bonus action. There's no object interaction. Huh. I'm trying to wrap my head around this system. Okay, sure. There are also activities that use more than a single action. Oh, interesting. Okay. And this art is actually fantastic. I love this art. I'm going to use this art. So don't worry. Um, these are often special abilities from your classes, characters, class, and feats. One common activity in your game is casting a spell, which usually uses two actions. Oh, so casting a spell is oftentimes two actions, unless it's like a fast spell, I'm guessing, which uses one. So on a normal turn, you can move, cast a spell, and that's three actions. You can attack with a weapon and then cast a spell, which is two actions. You can like open a door, cast a spell. I'm, I'm seeing it. I'm seeing it. Okay. Okay. I'm getting it. So no bonus actions, no object interactions. It's just three actions. And I don't know about reactions yet. Oh, reactions is right here. Great. Three actions such as dropping an object. Don't count towards the three actions you can take on your turn. This is actually a curious thing because in D&D, &D, free actions are quite literally only dropping an object and talking. Free actions is, a dis is distinguished from object interactions, which you can only have one of per turn. Free actions are truly... You can drop as many things as you want. That's not a free action. Picking things up is an object interaction, which is weird and always confused me. But, you know, that's how it is. Um, finally, each character can use up to one reaction during a round. Got it. This type of special type in action can be used even when it's not your turn, but it implies it can be used on your turn as well, like in D&D. Okay. Rogues, for example, can select a feat that lets them use a reaction to dodge an incoming attack. I don't know what this word means. I don't know what dodge means yet. In D&D, dodge is an official word, but it's not bolded here, so I don't know if there's a meaning to the word dodge besides entirely avoid it. Hmm. Okay. Attacking another creature is one of the most common actions in combat, and this can be done by this... And this can be done. This is done by using the strike action. Strike, I'm assuming, is the attack action. But now I understand this three-turn system. Strike is one attack, right? Strike is never more than one attack. You can correct me if I'm wrong. There are also spells and activities that need three actions. Really? Oh wow, wow, that's crazy. Okay, cool. Interesting. Okay, okay. Um, so strike is attack, but only one attack and it requires an attack made against an armor class. I understand what armor class is as far as I know. And strikes can be all of these things. You can add a, you can add a modifier to this role based on your proficiency rank. Oh, wait, proficiency rank. So can you be, can you be a, can you be legend? Can you have legendary proficiency in a weapon? You can, so, huh? You can have legendary proficiency in a weapon? So, like, I can attack, and that'll use a d20, plus my strength mod, plus my level, plus my legendary proficiency? Is that a thing? I. <laughs> okay, okay, wait, wait, wait. These numbers are getting really big. These numbers are getting really big. <laughs> My brain's not big enough to comprehend how big these numbers get. That could be like a 40-something to hit. Oh, oh my gosh. Okay, okay, okay. I can, these numbers get big. I get it. Okay, great. I'm real, I'm, I'm, I'm witnessing the bound, the bounded ceiling being much higher. <laughs> um, okay, okay. Um, with the type of target, you do ability scores, and sure, sure. Target's AC is calculated on their, using their proficiency rank in the armor they're wearing and their dex. Wait, this also scales? <laughs> armor also scales with proficiency? Oh, wait. Wait, 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 wait. Uh, okay, so AC, let's just pretend their AC is 10. Then you're, if they have legendary proficiency in 
tell me legendary proficiency in armor is a thing. Because that, that'd be so great. Legendary proficiency in armor plus their dex mod. Does this add... I need to know now. Do you when you when you're proficient in armor, do you also add your character level to your AC? That's important to me. If your proficiency rank is for statistic is trained, your bonus equals your character level plus another number. So your can your can your AC be a number plus your character level plus eight? Chat, tell me. I need to know. Oh, what the heck? Ah, oh, these numbers are so high. What? <laughs> these numbers are so high. Oh my, uh, chat's blowing my mind right now. How are these numbers so high? My brain's not big enough for this. Okay. So you can have... Legendary armor means at least a plus 28. That blows my mind. You, do you, you... Okay, William James. You say you legendary armor means at least a plus 28. That blows my mind because you know, you probably know in D&D, &D, the highest mod you can get on your armor is plus three for it being magical. And then maybe a plus two from your shield, plus whatever the shield has for being magical. And then there's the shield spell, I guess. Then there's artificer infusions, I guess. And the, the cap of armor class realistically is around 26 to 30. If you're telling me a plus 28 <laughs> can be added to an armor, that blows my mind. Uh, I will get the armor eventually, but but I need to know what the what the so, someone tell me in chat what is plate armor? What is what's what's the what's the highest base armor non magical? And I want to add a plus 28 to it. So so I want to know like what that looks like. Legendary someone someone in chat give me legendary armor class level 20 character highest non-magical armor And I'm, I'm gonna wait the 15 seconds to know what this is I, I can see the, I can see it spinning. So this, this is. Okay. 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 So chat is from what chat's showing me. This is hard to, this is hard to, to visualize without understanding armor rules. This is, this is beyond, this is currently understanding armor rules is currently beyond me. That's what I'm, that's what I'm understanding from the fact that chat doesn't tell me what this is. <laughs> Okay, cool. Let's just pretend like I know where that can go. Um, here, oh, here, here, here. I heard about this. I heard about this. Um, an attack deals damage if it hit and rolling critical success, dealing double damage. Oh, wow. Okay, so wait. So a critical success deals double. So crits, critical success still counts as doubling the damage of the crit. Dude, so you could just blow up something that has like no AC. If you got like a plus 20 to hit and they have like 10 AC, you could blow them up like immediately. <laughs> Because you 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 always roll double damage on your swings. That's pretty funny. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's definitely there's definitely a power vacuum <laughs> in terms of um, being clearly outranked by who you're fighting. That's very funny to me. Okay. You can use more than one strike action on your turn, I knew this, but each additional attack after the first becomes less accurate. This is reflected by a multiple attack penalty that starts at five on the second attack but increases to 10 on the third. There are many ways to reduce this penalty, but it resets at the end of your turn. Oh, okay. So you can use your three actions to strike, strike, strike. But one, but the first attack is normal. Second attack is minus five. Third attack is minus 10. Okay. Okay. Mm, okay. I understand this is kind of a deal breaker for a bunch of people um, <laughs> uh, who are used to the fighter of D and D, but I get it. I think that's, that makes sense. That's not too ridiculous. Uh, new Juju, wait, did when you read the plus 10 to hit AC as a crit? Yes, yes, I know. If you beat AC by plus 10, that's a crit and it does double damage. That's wild. That blows my mind. Okay. Okay, cool. The game assumes you're facing no higher than four levels above you and no lower than four levels below you. Okay, big assumption. 
If I walk into the if I walk into the forest as a level 15 character and I swing at a squirrel, is dead, right? It's like gone. You poof it because you're doubling the damage on your swing. And I I'm not my brain's not big enough to think about that. Let's hold that for now. Um. Okay. Okay. So I so so in summary, three actions. Spells are often two, but can sometimes be one or three. No, f no object interactions, no bonus actions, one reaction per round. You can strike three times, but each one takes a minus five penalty to hit each time. And if you hit someone's armor class at plus 10 or more, that's a crit success and that's double damage. And both armor class and attack rolls scale quite high by your if you're proficient depending on your proficiency which adds your character level and a static number two four six eight i'm getting it i'm seeing the vision i'm seeing the vision okay cool and full uh amir full attack is rarely the best action oh interesting good to know if your character finds itself the target of a magical lightning bolt you can tell call you can call on to attempt a saving throw i know this <laughs> I guess I know this a lot during this stream. Representing your character's ability to avoid danger. A saving throw is a check attempt to DC of the spell. Right. Three types of saving throws. Okay. I've heard of this. And a character's proficiency in each makes us a great deal about what they can endure. Fortitude is used when your character's health or vitality is under attack. So this is like con. And I and I understand from like now, I've only played 5th edition, but I understand from like 3rd or 4th edition, Fortitude, Reflex, and Will are like two stats combined. Fortitude is Strength and Con, Reflex is Dex Int, and Will is Wizka, I think? Something like that. Reflex is when your character must dodge away from danger, and Will is Defense against Charms and Effects against the character's mind. So this is kind of Int, Wiz, and Ka. Like, it's kind of all three in this situation. So that's when you'd use mental stats and so this is strength con this is dex and whiska you correct me if i'm wrong in chat but that's how it makes sense in my head for all saving throws like success lessons and scoring a critic ooh, scoring a critical success usually means your character escapes unscathed oh so if you plus 10 on it then you just don't take anything this will work the other way though <laughs> Does it work? If you critical fail, do you take double? Attacks, spells, has frequently either deal damage to a character or impose the conditions. Damage is subtracted from a creature's hit points. I know this. When a creature is reduced to hit points and falls unconscious and may die. Yes, I know this. A combat encounter typically lasts until one side has been defeated, and while this can be in retreat or surrender, it most often happens because one side is dead or dying. Conditions hinder a creature for a time. Some conditions are even permanent. Okay. Okay. Things are connecting. Things are connecting. Crit fails. Chat says crit fails are really bad. Fort will and ref only key off of con, whiz, and dex. Okay. Okay. I'm okay. Okay. Int, strength, and charisma don't have saves attached to them. Huh. Okay. Thank you, Jinbo. Appreciate that. Level 20 Paladin with fully enchanted full plate armor and shield is raised. Has 49 AC. Big numbers here. Big, big numbers. Okay. Moving on. Downtime. Huh. Instead, they recover from wounds, plan future conquests, conquest and pursue a trade in Pathfinder. It's called downtime. I was trying to pass quickly. Can trade, practice a trade, earn coin, red skills, crafting, retrain, replacing choices. Cool. This is a cool feature. They might even research a kingdom. Cool. Great. Key terms. Ability score. Six ability scores. Easy. Done. Remember. Alignment. Cool. I already know this. Ancestry. I don't know the details of ancestry yet. Ancestry. Ancestry determines a character's starting hit points. This is new to me. For real? Languages, senses, and speed, and it gains access to ancestry feats. <laughs> they should have just mentioned ancestry feats. That's neat. Armor class. How, how to hit. Yep. Attack. Yep. Know this. 
background. But each background grants a feat and training in one or more skills. That list seems important. Bonus and penalties. If you have more than one bonus of the same type, you only use the highest bonus. Yeah, I get that. Cool. Class. A character's class determines most of their proficiencies. Grants the character hit points each time they gain a new level. Gives access to a set of class feats. Oh, interesting. Okay, so here's the change. Ancestry gives your starting hit points, but your class gives all the other hit points after that. Makes sense. That makes sense. Yeah, but in D&D, basically, class would determine literally all of your hit points, and Ancestry had nothing to do with it. Okay, yeah. That's easy to understand. So, yeah, cool. Condition, I get this. Gold, no Electrum, unplayable. <laughs> Where is my Electrum? Gold pieces, silver pieces, copper pieces, platinum pieces. Oh my gosh, where's my Electrum? Where's my weird old currency that makes no sense and nobody likes it? Anyone who's played with me knows that I almost exclusively give Electrum in the worst possible scenarios. And that's, that's my joy. That sparks joy for me. <laughs> A feat. Okay, cool. Sp uh, special actions? I don't know what this means yet. I'm guessing I'm guessing special actions are things that are not in the base actions for all classes and it's just something certain classes can do. Game master. Galarian. Is this the country? Planet. Oh, I'm sorry, planet. So it's like a beer toral for Pathfinder. Galarian. Okay, good to know. Hit points. I know this. Initiative. I don't know if this is different yet, but I know this. Level. Monsters, NPCs, hazards, diseases, and poisons have levels ranging from 0 to 130. Oh, interesting. So not only monsters have this kind of CR rating, but also hazards, diseases, and poisons. An item's level, usually within the range of 0 to 20, but sometimes higher, indicates its power and suitability as its treasure. Now, <laughs> I'm I'm going to comment here because it may, it makes sense, but this is this is just a nitpick from like a from like a intu intuitive standpoint. Players level from 1 to 20. Items level from 0 to 20. 0 I'm assuming being like barely anything at all. Everything else levels from negative 1 to 30. And just like none of these three things could be congruous at all. And spells are one to tenth. Oh, one to tenth. Hello? <laughs> this is new to me. One to tenth. Yeah, so this is like four different ranges. Again, PCs one to twenty, monsters eleven to PCs one to twenty, monsters negative one to thirty, items zero to twenty, and spells one to tenth. Okay, and I'm guessing those match up. There's like a chart for that. Like, what, what's good for what level somewhere? Okay. NPC. Chat's probably telling me things. Stat conditions have levels. Stats have... Conditions have levels too? What does that mean? What does it mean, conditions level... <laughs> Nobody likes that I use Electrum. <laughs> uh, okay. Um... Status conditions have levels? What does that mean? What does it mean statuses have levels? Okay, what I will I'll process that later, I'm sure. A level five item is good for a level five character, but level oh well I mean that makes sense. Okay, well items and players Oh wait, 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 wait. So items Oh, interesting. So since items have level ranges from zero to twenty that gives you a more accurate representation of what level these items are should be available for. I'm guessing plus minus four is the usual acceptance range. Or plus minus two, plus minus three. So that's better than common, uncommon, rare, very rare, legendary, because those are vaguely matching up to 1, 5, 9, 13, 17. Okay, sure. Yeah, I can get behind that. Yeah, items having very specific ranges, I can get behind that. 
Okay, condition levels. Frightened one, two, three. Slowed one, two, three. Quick and Oh no, my that that that's some Final Fantasy nonsense. <laughs> when conditions have like level like Faraga, Blizzaga, this is this is so much. Oh my gosh, conditions have levels. Conditions have levels. I'm this is so much. Okay. <laughs> this is this is sounds like a something that's gonna have to sink in and a lot of this won't make sense until i actually get to play which is two weeks from now so so don't so let's not let's not go crazy here items levels of suggestion of course naturally naturally um perception not explained but intuitive proficiency i'm understanding i get this now rarity rarity wait huh rarity a Primarily applies to equipment and magic items, but spells, feats, and other rules and elements also have a rarity. What? If no rarity appears in the comment of an item spell or the game element, it is of common rarity. Uncommon items are available only to those with special have special training, grow up in certain certain cultures, come from a particular part of the world. Rare items are almost impossible to find, and are usually given out only by the GM. While unique ones are literally one of a kind in the game. Oh. Huh. So wait, 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 wait. So. So, okay, so wait. So rarity is different from level. An item can have a level that denotes its power range. But it also has a rarity denoting how easy it is to find. Chat says, rarity is basically this could be disruptive or not fit with the campaign theme. So it's the DM's ability to restrict its availability. But you're telling us, so, so, so what I'm understanding is that like an item can be in theory level, like a level 20 item, but also be common. So there's such thing as like a common level 20 item, although that's unintuitive, it's possible. Whereas rarity in D&D often dictates its power level and what general character level range it should belong to. That's interesting. Okay, so be it. Interesting. Okay, that's 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 good for me. I get that. So rarity is is availability as per DM's ruling. And level is its power. A strict a strict comparison to power. Interesting. Are there I know I want to know from chat, are there any interesting like imbalances in terms of level and power where something has a proportionately high level or low high level low rarity or low level high rarity? That would be like notably interesting, where its rarity doesn't necessarily denote how powerful it is. Okay, and people and people are pointing me to read the perception again. Perception measures your character's ability to notice hidden objects or unusual situations, and usually determines how quickly the character springs into action in combat. Wait, hold on, huh? It usually determines how quickly the character springs into action in combat. Is this not initiative? How is this? This is different from initiative. At the start of an encounter, all creatures involved roll for initiative to determine the order in which they act. The higher the result of its roll, the earlier the creature gets to act. It usually determines how quickly a character springs into action in combat. What does this mean? Initiative is a skill roll, typically perception? Huh. Oh, interesting. So initiative in this game, initiative isn't tied to dex implicitly it's tied to usually perception but can be other stats oh the gym can call for other skills to roll for initiative dang okay yeah 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 i could see that yeah i i could see that because that makes sense because if like just because you're an acromat doesn't mean you're aware of your surroundings, right? So you might be physically the quickest to act, but not necessarily someone who recognizes that it's a dangerous situation first. Interesting. Okay. 
that's that's curious and i don't i think that's um it's not an upgrade or a downgrade it's just an interesting choice which i dig okay so role playing yes staying in character awesome round i get cool saving throw uh you attempt a saving throw automatically you don't have a reaction a reaction yes and like most checks a character who isn't acting also dc for the saving throw yes yes and fortitude reflex and will are the three saving throws yes i know this now i know this this is new but i know this now <laughs> skill represents a character's a creature's ability to perform certain tasks that require instruction or practice right because you can have untrained in different levels of proficiency here in these skills speed is the distance a character can move in a single action measured in feet so this confirms to me that you don't move for free in this game movement which is stride i think chat told me movement is stride which is an action so wait does that means you can use three actions and stride three times so you could stride 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 or stride stride attack right wow wait you can get pretty fast with that <laughs> wait you can go you can go, you, can, you can go the distance if you just triple stride Oh, that's interesting. I like that. I like that. Cool. Okay. Spells are magical effects. Casting a spell usually involves two actions. Specifies targets, actions to cast it, and how it can be resistant if it class cast spells. <laughs> Chat says yes, 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 yep, 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 yep. Thank you. Thank you, guys. Um, client. Yeah, usually in in D and D, it's like you got to be a rogue to bonus action dash, action dash, movement. And they're like the only class that can triple their speed in a turn. Um, and monks, I guess, too. But here, basically anybody can. Every, anybody can triple speed. If they triple stride. Cool. Cool, cool, cool. A if, a if a class grants spells, the basics of the ability are provided in a class description in Chapter 3. Okay, okay. Trait. Keywords. Oh, keywords. Okay. Now, I'm going to make a guess on this, because I, I'm pretty sure I know what this means. D&D &D kind of has traits. Kind of, right? It's not, not really. Like, concentration is a keyword. Rarities are keywords. Um, when you see the word cold, that's, that's like, that has meaning. There are... the. D&D is written in a way that has natural language. It's supposed to be written out like a normal paragraph and you can read it normally, but words may or may not have implicit meanings. And one D&D tried to fix this, fix the clarity of this, because sometimes you can't tell if a word has a separate meaning, right? Sometimes it's unclear. D one D&D tried to fix this by giving certain words capitalizations and then adding their definitions into a rules glossary at the end of the documents. I'm guessing trait is kind of like your like fireball probably has the traits like area of effect burning or something like that or instant you know like the, those words that like already you know once you see them what those mean right that's my guess yeah they're like tags Cool. Yeah, yeah, I like the clarity of, of traits. I always understand. You always understand. It's not like intuitive to someone who's just reading it. But once you understand tags and traits, then it starts making sense. And I, I prefer it over anything once those are clear. I dig that. Cool. <laughs> this still makes me laugh. All the traits used in this book appear in a glossary and index beginning on page 628. Wonderful. 628. Hey, welcome, Indestructible Boy. What's up? Nice seeing you here. Uh, let me see. And then turn. Right. Turn. Three actions during a turn. Got it. Cool. Example of play. Okay, we're gonna we're gonna see if this makes sense. Okay. I cast my light spell. I know what this is. Light spell. Okay. Perception modifier plus five. Okay. Okay, all of this makes sense so far. Roll for initiative, Valeros, and Chiro need to roll perception 
while well, Marisol should roll stealth. Oh, so your GM tells you what stat you're using? Why is Marisol rolling stealth? Marisol takes cover while two of you advance. Marisol. Oh, okay. Okay, so like, if you choose to hide before combat, your initiative is based on stealth. But if you advance forward, your initiative is based on perception. Okay. Interesting. Huh, interesting. But stealth is a dex stat. So if you prefer a dexy initiative, you should probably stealth before combat. But if you prefer, like, if you have a higher whiz or a higher perception proficiency, you'd prefer to advance forward and kind of use your eyes for that. Okay. First action, draw dagger. Second action, stride. Final action, throw dagger. James rolls a 13 and adds 8. Due to Marisol's skill at throwing daggers for a total of 21. But the range means he takes a minus 2 penalty. Oh, is this disadvantage? This is new to me. Is this disadvantage? Minus 2 penalty? For a result of 19. Eric consults his notes to learn that a monster has an AC of 18. That's a hit. I had dexter damage to sneak attack. Hello, friend. Hello, old friend. Extra damage applies to attacks. Rogues have the ability to deal extra damage to foes that haven't yet acted in, a, in an encounter. Oh, okay. So it's like if you beat them in initiative and you hit them, that's sneak attack. This extra damage also applies to attacks against enemies that are distracted. I don't know what this merge means yet. I don't know what distracted means. Is this a con is this a distract? Is distracted a condition? James rolls 1d4 for the dagger. 1d6 for sneak attack, 4 for dex, total of 9. All that makes sense. That's That all makes sense to me. Okay, religion skill check. Use bless. Anyone next to me, a plus 1 bonus to attack rolls. So it's not 1d4 here, it's plus 1. Okay, cool. Fortitude save. I use my reaction to nimbly dodge out of the way. Is this something that James can do? Okay, so you gained the second one condition, which is going to give you a minus one penalty to your d20 rolls. Interesting. So it's just a flat minus one penalty. This is like, um, this is like exhaustion one in one D&D. Or what they're trying to do with it. I use my reaction to nimbly dodge it out of the way. The, but the nimble dodge feat... Let's her use her reaction to increase her AC by two. Okay, so this is what the dodge word means. This is what dodge means. Okay. In this case, you take... Huh. So you can use dodge feet to add plus two to your AC. I'm, I'm seeing... I'm seeing a lot of plus twos, minus twos, plus ones, minus ones. I'm guessing these add up, and I also am guessing that having a computer calculate all this when you play online is really helpful <laughs> if you ever forget how many mods you have on these. Okay, okay. So so what I've seen so far, um, minus two for... minus two for um, long range, plus one from bless minus one from sickened plus two ac from dodge these are all new things to me but i'm, I'm seeing there's like um there's a system of tiny buffs kind of stacking on each other and that's perfectly fine unless they're as long as they're all differently named okay oh here <laughs> okay let's get spicy here this is this is spicy to me this is spicy to me um, Eric rolls a second attack with the gas, this time with the claw. Normally, this attack would have a minus five multiple attack penalty. That's because you're using strike as your second action. See, I'm learning. I'm learning. But since the claw has the agile trait, agile trait, hello, the penalty is only minus four. Is the agile trait very specifically, if you attack, if you strike more than once per turn, 
you only take a minus four penalty instead of a minus five. And then if you attack a third time, it'll only be minus eight versus minus 10. <laughs> I guess we'll find out. Eight point of damage, fortitude saving throw. You are paralyzed because he fit. Okay. He gets a four and after adding his bonus and his minus one penalty from second. I'm learning. I'm learning. Comes out to only nine. You are paralyzed because he failed the fort save. Making her unable to act. Okay, paraly everybody hates paralyzed, I see. Everybody still hates paralyzed. About time to, I raise my shield. That's an action. <laughs> right? This is an action? Oh, wait. No, wait. Did the lizard go yet? Oh, yes, yes, yes. So, raising your shield is an action. And use my final two actions to take a sudden charge. Sudden charge is a fighter feat. I'm seeing the word feat pop up a lot. That lets Valerius move up to twice his speed and attack at the end of his movement, all for only two actions. Oh, so this is like stride, stride, attack, but all at once. So action, raise shield, double action to stride, stride, punch. Okay, I'm see, I'm seeing the vision here. So you could attack, stride, stride. You could attack sudden charge to attack, stride, stride, attack. I know you'd never... Well, you could do that, I guess. Um, okay. So, some people get to kind of cheat the action system depending on the feats that they have. Uh, I see it. I see it. I'm visualizing the combat. I'm, I'm, I can see it in my, in my mind's eye. I can see it. There's a, there's, a lot of, there's a lot of terminology being rewritten here as I'm learning what everything does in this new system. Okay, attempt fortitude save. Makes sense. Attack roll. Critical success. Great. Double the damage on crits. Makes sense. Oh, wait. What? <laughs> wait, wait, wait. Hold on, hold on. Because it is a critical success, she then doubles the total? You Wait, you double flat mods in this game too? Chat, tell me. Do you double flat mods? She rolled a 5 on her 1d8, plus 4 from her strength mod, which makes 9, and then you double the whole thing for 18? Wow. Wait, wait, that's a, that's, a, that's a lot of damage. That's a lot of damage. Oh my gosh. Okay. And that ends a combat example. I see. I see. That's... Numbers are big, fam. Numbers are big in this game. Okay. Okay. Dub doubling everything. Okay, and this is the guide on things okay cool this is chapters and stuff yada yada oh symbols action single act two actions three actions confirming the three action activities exist good to know reactions free actions <laughs> wait i didn't realize this rhyme reaction free action Wait. Oh, huh. Free actions don't require you to spend any of your single three actions or your reaction. Reaction might have a trigger like a reaction does. If so, you can use it just like a reaction, even if it's not on your turn. However, you can only use one free action per trigger. So if you have multiple free actions with the same trigger, you have to decide which one to use. If free action doesn't have a trigger, Use it like a single action just without spending any of your actions for the turn. Ah. Okay. So this is like... So free action in this example would be like... Um, it would be like evasion. Theoretically, right? D&D 5e's evasion triggers no matter what. You don't have to... Like... You don't have to use any action economy to use it. You could just say, I'm using evasion and your damage is halved or entirely nullified i know that system already exists in some capacity in pathfinder but this is for example in terms of dnd 5e that's a free action but if you had another feature that triggered off of taking damage from a saving throw that wasn't evasion then you would not be able to do that because that is also a free action and you can only have one free action per trigger okay 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 Okay. 
And if it doesn't have a trigger, you can just use it whenever. Got it. Okay, I'm following. I'm picking up what you're putting down. Wait, do I need to read this? Junebug is telling me to read this. No, I, I know these are general summaries of the chapters. Yes, I understand this implicitly. Okay. Great, great, great. Okay, so. we It is 9.42 where I'm at, EST. We've reached the end of chapter one. Have we? Oh, we haven't yet. How much more of chapter one is there? Oh, there's a lot of chapter one. <laughs> oh my gosh, chapter one is so long. Reading rules. Okay, action, prerequisite, frequency, trigger, requirements. This makes sense to me. This is all very simple. Special. Yeah, 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 yeah. This make this is this is intuitive. Are these any different? Strength, physical power, right? Melee damage rolls. No matter what, like you, there's no like finesse here. You can't ever add dex to melee damage rolls. Dex is for ranged weapons. Dex is just for ranged. What if you throw a? What if you throw a rock? Is that dex, guys? If you throw a rock, is that dexterity? Like a like a big old boulder. Just huck it over your head. Is that dexterity? Okay. Constitution. Uh finesse only finesse only adds to hit. Dex is never to damage. Finesse only adds dex to attack rolls. Huh. Okay. I think... Damage on finesse still adds strength. Huh. So, like, if you want to do a... I, I can't think about it in D&D terms, I'm guessing. But, like, a melee attack cannot scale with both... A melee weapon attack cannot use dex for both attack rolls and damage rolls unless... The weapon is finesse, which turns the attack roll to dex, and a rogue feature, which makes the damage dex. Am I following? Is this is this is this all making sense? Okay. What I'm getting from chat is that throwing is always dex. Oh, okay, okay. I'm seeing the effort of like they're trying not to make dex centralizing and i see it i get it constitution makes sense a high intelligence allows your character to analyze situations understand patterns and it means they become can become trained in additional skills oh cool thank you this is so good intelligence means they can become trained in additional skills and might be able to manage to and might be able to master additional languages yeah dang that makes sense yes of course that's good. I like that. Nice little buff to intelligence. Wisdom <laughs> measures your character's common sense. Wisdom modifier is added to your perception of will saves. Charisma, strong personality, ability of influence. Great. Cool. Okay. Uh, so now it's... Do I... How much do I need? Oh, wait. Are these all the same? The ability modifiers is all the same. Great. They don't cap it at 30. Suspiciously, I don't see a cap on 30. <laughs> oh, maybe I should know this. Ability boost normally increases an ability score's value by two. However, however, if the ability score to which you're applying an ability boost is already 18 or higher, its value increases by only one. At first level, a character can never have any ability score that's higher than 18. An ability boost normally increases an ability score's value by 2. 
Oh. Oh, so if you gain an ability boost, it's assumed to be plus two. But if you're adding it to a score that's already 18 or higher, it's a plus one. So the word ability, so you gain an ability boost, quote unquote, is a plus two to any stat that's not 18 or higher. Interesting. Okay. I understand the terminology. Ability flaws are minus two. Okay. Roll four set of die, discard the lowest. Yep. That's 46, keep highest three. Yes, this is one. This is what I understand. This is like how I usually roll. And then apply the ability boost gained by ancestry. Oh, wait, this is all alternative stuff. Okay, I don't want to know alternative stuff. I don't want to, I don't want to know things that aren't the, the basic understanding of the rules. Okay. Create a concept. Okay, we are getting, uh, the time is closing in here. Oh, wait, 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 wait. We got to see the class. We got to see the races before we end this. Okay. Uh, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. New super chat. Uh, William James, it's so cool to see you go through the same flashes of recognition and learning that all new players do. I hope we're not overwhelming you in chat. You guys type a lot in chat. <laughs> I will fully disclose that I do not see like a third or a fourth of the readings because there's a lot that you're teaching me that I'm not able to process yet because I don't know anything past page 20. And there's 600 something pages in this book. So I know about, okay, someone do the math. 640 divided by 20. I know one 32nd <laughs> of, of the, of the Pathfinder core book. So there's lots of going over my head and I'm trying not to think too hard about it, but thank you so much, William James. This is actually very fun. I thoroughly enjoy, I thoroughly, I really, really enjoy learning new games. And this whole thing of me trying to learn 99 games is really fun. And it's, it sparked up, sparked creativity every time I read anything. And it's not just Pathfinder, it's all of them. They all have something unique that I've never thought of before. And the whole series is a attempt to highlight like the coolest things about every game. That's not the one about a dragon in a dungeon, you know? So, so yeah. Uh, <laughs> uh, uh, what do you call it? Amir says, no one knows all of the book. I'm sure someone out there knows all of the book. There's got to be some guy that knows all the books. Um, okay. Anyway, I'm going to look at the, at the ancestries and then I will, I will ask chat what you guys think I would find interesting just to kind of end this stream. You can point me towards anything. I'll control F it and find it what it is. If you think I'll find it interesting, I'll look it up, but not after, not before we do this. So ancestries. Oh, that's it. Okay, there's there's six. Dwarf, elf, gnome, goblin, halfling. Oh, interesting. Human. Wait. What did we leave out? <laughs> Hold on. Wait. Oh, okay, okay, okay. I'm I'm looking at it from a D&D 5e perspective, right? We're missing from the D&D roster. We're missing half orc, half elf. Which, you know, whatever. So, Orc. We're missing Orc. Dragonborn. Tiefling. Is that it? I guess, right? That's it? But, but instead, we have... Gnome Goblin meet has, is in the main roster, which is awesome. What's really cool about this is that there's three races that are small. Right? Am I mistaken? There's three small races? And three medium races. Also, this art is amazing. This human art over here, I love that. Wow, I love his, I love his robe, I love his glasses, his hair. That is a fantastic picture. Is this a dwarven ranger? No, <laughs> this isn't the dwarf from the cover, right? This is not the dwarf from the cover. Wait, wait, wait! I can find him here. You're gonna tell me that the, I'm gonna scroll down and the dwarf better be the ranger. 
Okay, not yet, not yet. Oh, he is! There he is! The dwarf is the ranger, you're right. Oh my gosh, you guys are right. I should have never doubted you. The dwarf is the ranger. I guess you guys just know that. Yeah, you guys just know that, right? And this is the... Is this the monk from the cover? From the sub cover? The sorcerer from the sub cover? The wizard? Who is on the cover? No, the paladin. Where are you, paladin? You, oh, you were... There's a different paladin on the cover. Never mind. Let me scroll up. Now I need to know. Now I'm so curious. Um... Now I know, Cleric ro cleric Ranger Rogue, and these guys over here, still scrolling, still scrolling. This is the, this is Monk, this is the iconic Monk. Oh wait, here, this is you. This is the, this is the Paladin now, I know that. And this over here is the Sorcerer. Connecting the dots, guys, connecting dots. Okay, so cool, there's only six races. And I'm guessing that there's, um, I'm guessing that there are like sub ancestries. What is the term for sub ancestries? Is there like deep goblin, prairie goblin? <laughs> is that, is that a thing here? Are, am I, are there sub ancestries or are those defined by like feats you pick up? Cause I know that there are ancestral feats that are like tied into these heritages. Okay. Heritages. Okay. Okay. Oh, it's not, it's not paladin. It's champion. Oh, champion. Oh, cool. 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 Okay. I didn't, I didn't know I was mistaken. Not paladin champion. Okay, sub ancestry is heritage. Oh my gosh, it goes so deep. Um, this they all have specific ability boosts, which I know now. Ability boosts means plus two to any stat that's not eighteen or higher, and if it's already eighteen or higher, it's a plus one. Oh look, it says right here, humans are diverse. Some, such as half elves and half orcs, even have non-human ancestors. Wow, cool. Cool, so they're mentioned. That's great. Okay, so now I'm gonna look up heritages, because now, now we gotta know, because there's there's subdivisions to these ancestries. And these races, I can wait. There is zero chance. Oh, is this the guy I'm playing? This is the guy I'm playing, guys. This guy has a name. I forget what his name is, but in the in the one shot I'm playing, which is um Oh, I should tell you guys. Right, right, right. Let me explain this, guys. Um So so I said this at the beginning of the chat, but um, on Sunday, two weeks from now, I'm going to be playing a game of Pathfinder, my first ever game of Pathfinder 2A, 2E, with the D&D crew that I've been playing with for the last, officially, four years. We've been playing together for four years, D&D, we've played over 100 games together, well over 100 by now, um, and this is all of our first time ever playing Pathfinder 2E, which is very exciting. We're all really getting into it. And the DM is learning everything they can. I've been tasked to play this fighter guy, Valeros. I need to confirm from chat, is he cool? Is he a cool guy? Or is he just like Mr. Mr. Fighter Man? Or is there more to him? Because he looks a lot like Mr. Fighter Man. <laughs> Which is like the default, like Ryu Street Fighter Mario from, from Super Mario Smash Bros. Um... But yeah, it's so, it's so exciting because we're all playing Pathfinder for the first time and we've only known D&D by V as we've been playing with each other and it's a whole new cool thing. Uh, the party includes uh, my co-host from my podcast, uh, Marilla. She's in there. She's going to be playing Cleric, this one over here. And we've all been given these like basic character sheets, which I haven't read yet. I think the next time I do a stream about Pathfinder 2E, it's going to be me learning what the fighter does. Because I, I don't know what he does. I think we're starting at level one. I don't know. But I need I need to know how to play the fighter. Because otherwise, I'm just going to attack, attack, attack. <laughs> and you guys are telling me that's ill-advised. So, yeah. 
Are you going to make him cool? I don't know. Is he cool? You, he has lore, right? You guys got to tell me his lore. Okay, Junebug. Valeros follows a DDAD that loves drinking, but he def has some fighter man energy in him. Got it. Okay. I guess you could read some Paizo blogs on Iconics. Or, Iconics are like their names, right? Like the sim, important people. Well, the Iconics. Mr. Fighter Man is my father. Please call me Fighter. <laughs> He's a jaded, drunk fighter, dude. Hits hard. You should start level one. Okay. Okay. Cool. Okay. Well, this character sheet, by the way, looks terrifying. There is a lot going on here, and it blows my mind. That is beyond anything I could ever understand. Oh, thank you, Kobe Belcher. Colby. Wait. Where are you? Colby. Hello? Oh, my gosh. I missed it. I need to know what happened. Colby sent me a tip. Oh, he sent me 10 bucks. Well, thank you so much, Colby. I appreciate that. That's so kind. Uh, I hope you're enjoying. I hope you're learning. If you are or just enjoying me learning, you probably know more than I do. But this sheet looks terrifying. This character sheet actually just beyond me. Um, <laughs> I'm sure I'll understand it now, but that's a lot of boxes. That's a lot of boxes. Okay, this is all... This is all character stuff. I don't, I, I will need to know this, but not tonight. Next stream, if I do a stream about Pathfinder 2E, I gotta know about the fighter. I, I'm learning the fighter. I'm learning fighter man. And there's nothing you guys can do to stop me. <laughs> um, and that's basically it. Uh, I'm going to take suggestions from chat in our last five minutes. What's something cool I could look up here. That would be like something I would enjoy. Caden, Kaelian, the accidental god? Wait, that sounds sick. Is the accidental, is that his god? Just some dude who accidentally became one? He worships Caden, Kaelian, the accidental drinking god. The drinking god became a god on a bet. Wait, that's so funny. Oh my gosh. Wait, I gotta look him up. Is he in this book? Caden? Cade, Caden? Caden, Kaelian. Caden? Wait, no, give me more. I need to know more. Yeah, search the 642 pages. Adobe. Find me Caden Kalian. Wait, what is this? What is this? This is this is okay, wait, I'm lost. Where am I? Kaden Kalian? Okay, wait. This is this is beyond me. What am I looking at right now? Avatar. Got it, got it, got it. Okay. Beyond me. Too far ahead. Too far ahead. Keep searching. I need a deitic entry about Kaden Kalian. Perfect. Okay, we found it, guys. We found chat. We found it. Uh Kaden Kalian, the drunken hero ascended from mortal life on a drunken dare becoming becoming the god of ale freedom and wine kaden promotes freedom and encourages others to find their own path in life he fights for just causes and delights in the best indulgences edicts drink free slaves and aid the oppressed seek glory and adventure anathema waste alcohol be mean or standoffish when drunk own a slave whoa whoa slow down fam slow down <laughs> Oh, this is the opposite of him. Opposite of him. Got it. Follow line is neutral. Good. Chaotic. Good. Chaotic. Neutral. Devotee benefits. Divine font. I don't know what that means yet. Heal. Divine skill. Athletics. The favorite weapon. Rapier. Domains. Cities. Freedom. Indulgence. Might. Cleric spells. Fleet step. Touch of idiocy. What is this spell? Who? Hallucination. And that's it for him. Okay. Cool. 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 You know what? Uh, search up impossible technique for something you might be familiar with. Okay, last thing I'm going to do on the stream is look up impossible technique. Let's go. Impossible technique. Will I find it? Is it at the end of the book or the beginning? We're about to find out. Probably the beginning. I'm holding my breath. 
Impossible. I spelled it right? Yeah, I spelled it right. Okay, impossible technique. Wait, that's not the one. Next. Impossible technique. An enemy attacks an enemy attack hits you where you fail a saving throw against an enemy's ability. Requirements you're not armored or fatigued. This is a oh, this is a monk thing. You execute a maneuver that defies possibility. If the triggering effect was an enemy's attack hitting you, the enemy rerolls the attack roll and uses the lower result. If the triggering effect equals you failing a saving throw, you reroll the saving throw and use a higher result. Did you just send me silvery barbs? How dare you? How dare you send me silvery barbs? <laughs> I'm kidding. Um, cool. So this imposes um, disadvantage. Oh, is it, this is my the first mention of a disadvantage state that I've read so far. And if it trigger and if you fail a saving throw, you re-roll and higher. So this is advantage. Huh. <laughs> okay, cool. So I'm guessing from this that advantage and disadvantage are not only like not words here. Like they're not official terms, but they're very rare. Oh, sick. Advantage, disadvantage is a level 20 monk feat. That's crazy. That's interesting. So everything functions on the plus one, plus two, minus one, minus two system. Where you just kind of stack up a whole lot of mods and roll from there. Okay, cool. Good to know. That's that's important. Because I would have been asking for advantage like on a bunch of things. And that's just kind of like the D&D player in me. Okay, cool. Great. Nice. Neat. Okay, thank you. All right, well. Uh, it's 10 o'clock for me. That's like my bedtime-ish. Uh, I appreciate you guys all tuning in and watching this. Uh, there will be another stream for Pathfinder next week on Friday. Um, what day is it today? Monday? Yeah. So next week is wild. Next week is... Next week is three streams. So Monday is the TTRPG Eyes on the Prize. It's a Valentine Day, Valentine's Day themed TTRPG where two players pretend to be in love to con a party or a system or a family. To pull off a con, they have to pretend to be in love. And that's the concept of the TTRPG. It's every rom-com, rivals to lovers. Very excited to do that. On Wednesday... The stream is Tangled Blessings. Tangled Blessings is a game that's not even out yet, but it's a game about rival um, magical academics who delve into this sort of horror-y, magic-y world, which is very fun. And I'll have the actual author there with me uh, walking us through it, which is awesome. And then on Friday is the third stream. I don't know how this all fell in the same week, but they are. Uh, <laughs> on Friday, we're going to tackle pathfinder one more time before i play on sunday and we're going to learn about the fighter and i think that's just a simple way of jumping into this game so monday eyes on the prize wednesday tangled blessings friday pathfinder 2e that's all next week the rest of this week uh i'm taking off for a bit to, to finish up some videos that i have been putting off for a good long time because there have been four other games before this that i still need to make content on so thank you guys for tuning in this was wonderful. I learned so much. I still, judging from chat, have so much to learn because you guys are just throwing words at me and I don't know what any of them are. Oh, fortune to misfortune mean advantage to disadvantage. That's good to know. Okay, cool. Cool, 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 cool. Thank you guys for tuning in. Wow, big old number. Uh, I'll see you guys in a bit and have a wonderful night. Goodbye.